Hey, what's up? Your favorite sorcerer already is Sopax with a new video blog for you. And in this video blog, I'm going to talk about how to actually gain the power of the spirits that you're working with. Right? Because at the end of the day, that's really what we should aim at. Right? What I always teach my students is like, is this, okay? So the way you should work with spirits is at first you <clears throat> um, connect with them, you call them, and then you send them out to do things for you. And in the process of working with them, you should be able to attain their power. It's kind of like a, like a, like a uh, mentorship. Of course, not in just one ritual, but that happens over time, you know, if you do it correctly. And this is what I'm going to talk about today. Because, look, spirit, magic, magic is about spiritual autonomy, first of all, okay? You know, especially if you're on a left-hand path. It means you're seeking more freedom. You don't seek bondage, okay? You don't seek being bound and being being dependent on more and more and more influences, whether that's a physical um, um, a humanoid or a spiritual influence, right? What you're looking for, I'm assuming, if you're on the left-hand path, if you're practicing magic, witchcraft, black magic, it means that you're seeking freedom, right? You seek more control over the world and more autonomy. And in order to gain that, you have to work with the spirits in a certain way. And this is what I'm gonna talk about now. So, first of all, understand that anything around you influences you. Any person that you hang out with, any person that you um, spend time around is influencing you. And you don't really have a choice about that. You are being programmed wherever you go, whoever you interact, interact with that has an influence on you. That's why, number one, it's very, very important that you're conscious about your choices when it comes to, um, when it comes to friends, you know, associates. You want to pick the right ones, right? Because they can either lift you up, be one of the most powerful forces to get you where you want, or they can pull you down, one of the heaviest, heaviest obstacles to you getting where you want to want to go, right? I'm sure you heard this before. It's very true, but it's true when it comes to spirits as well. You don't just call a spirit randomly, okay? Like the the the, the stupidest thing you could do is, oh, I need um, I have this problem, whatever. Like I don't know. I want to um, I want to put a love spell on on X Y Z, right? Now the stupidest thing they could do is just randomly browse through a grimoire. Right, and then find a random spirit that 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 deals with love spells, right? And then, boom, that's it. Now let's do the ritual with that spirit. That's that's the stupidest thing that you could do. Why? Because man, there's always more that comes with that. It's not just that. Okay, first of all, most of you are probably not even going to be able to call the spirit because you haven't learned the technique, because you haven't taken my courses, you haven't learned. See, that that it's most of you are not even capable of calling spirits, right? because you need technique for that. But number two, you can't just call any spirit just for the fuck of it. That's stupid, that's really dumb because there are a lot of influences that come with that. So you gotta be conscious about what that spirit really represents, its character traits, all of that, right? So that's research that has to happen, all right? A lot of you guys wanna do a pact because you wanna, I don't know, do one specific, you wanna accomplish one specific task. That's not what a pact is for. So what a pact is for. Do you even understand what a pact is? A pact is the commitment to transform into a new being, okay? Into a new being. You can't come to this with, with like impulses. You know, I want this now, and now I'm, I'm gonna make a pact. I'm gonna sell my soul, blah, 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 which doesn't work anyways, you know? So understand that the spirit that you're working with will transform you. If it's a transformation that you're looking for, that's great. If it's not a transformation that you're looking for, if you don't want to become that spirit, then it's not a good choice. It's not a good choice. Now, the mind is really, really super, super powerful. And whatever comes to your conscious awareness is, is almost nothing. All of the decisions that are being made is are in your subconscious. There's almost there's hardly any conscious decision that we're making. 
The conscious mind is more like a, like a sales department. It confabulates stories about why it makes sense what our subconscious mind decided on. And the, there are three impulses that, you know, are the, the biological imperative. Meaning the, 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 the body, our survival mechanism wants us to, to do that, right? Now, on top of that, when you're able to, to, to transcend that animalistic thing, there's also spiritual influences, but they also come through the subconscious. They come through the same mechanism. So your intuition is tightly linked to your, to your body, you see? Now, your world, your universe is determined by the filters that are in your subconscious, you know? And the, the filters, they attract certain things and they repel certain things and they allow to, uh, things to come through from the, from the subconscious into the conscious mind. Now, when you're working with a spirit, you will become like that spirit. Not in one ritual, but as you keep working with that spirit, you will become like it. Now, <clears throat> how do you then make that power your own? You must actually practice what that spirit represents okay so let's say you work with a spirit and you did that in order to attain the ability to seduce you have to go out and seduce you have to do the activity you want to call a spirit to learn how to heal better how to be a better healer you gotta you gotta do the thing you gotta do the thing itself and then it's gonna be like a lost memory that you're recovering a lost memory that you're recovering. It's good. You're gonna you're gonna pick up that ability so fast. It's 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 really interesting to see that, and I've seen it again and again and again. And you must really take that aspect seriously. So, the bottom line of this message is: understand that when you're working with a spirit, you are really making a making a decision of who you want to become. It's not just about the external thing. You know, I get messages all the time. You know, people offer me to pay to offering to pay me this and that amount of money, blah blah blah. So listen, I don't give a fuck, all right? If I don't want to do something, I, I I'm not going to do it, okay? I don't care how much you pay me. I don't need your money. Seriously. That's number 1. Number 2, they they're always coming from this from this uh, impulse, you know. There's a pain involved, which is not a problem. Of course, it's, that's fine, you know. But just because you want something instantaneously, it doesn't mean that it's the right thing, you know. And I'm not going to do something that is not in the person's best interest. Why? Because well, I, I don't need to. Okay, I don't think like that. If you want bullshit, you gotta go somewhere else. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm sure you wouldn't even watch this video if you were one of those people okay but the bottom line is this be aware of the of the consequences of what you do be aware of what the spirit is going to affect in your life how it's going to affect you and how your life can benefit and also can take damage if you don't pay attention okay i'll see you in the next video blog bye